Hey guys, some gamer dude here. So time for day two of Oracle Think Tank weekend. Today we're doing witches, and I'm really surprised I did this so quickly. And I'm actually wondering if we'll see the witches that came out as support for Coco back in BTO7, namely Lawa and Lulu. Although there was a couple of other cards that no one cares about them. They were that irrelevant. Anyway, we'll start with Sprout Witch Lolo. Grade 1, 10,000 shield, 8,000 defense, those standard stats. When this, sorry, on regard, should state that. When the attack it boosted hits a vanguard, counterblast one and put this unit in the soul, draw a card. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of boosters in the deck now because of triggers um, being perfect guards these days. Though, if they get another critical trigger, I'm kind of wondering if uh, we'll stick with the perfect guards that are triggers, uh, especially for protect clans, because they did specifically say when uh, B was uh, in previous season, before it even started, that protect clans will eventually not need perfect guards so much. The grade three rides should take the place of them. And that's probably because they're using triggers for offense. It'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see. But when she's in the soul as an automatic, when your grade three or greater vanguard with which in its name is placed, so when you ride, soul plus one and call this unit to regard. So you get a plus one off it over time. So to me, uh, well, you don't even really need an RVR pardon. It's just kind of threat. Because you go with the Vanguard, whatever's passed on to the other column, attack with this. Go on, you get a, a counter blast out, draw a card out of it, and then the other one has threat. Or leave this for last. Actually, go ahead, leave this one for last. Because the other one's probably more damaging anyway. And then next turn, when you ride, so blast one, get plus one. So, yeah, it works out. It's very roundabout, and there's probably better cards than this, but it's cute in, in that what it does mechanically. It, it's uh, it's fiddly, but and there's probably better ways to get a plus one, but it's it's nice in that it, it gives threat and it gives a plus one, and it's not that costly, not really. So let's go over to Topo's Topaz Witch PP. Yep, that's 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 a name. Grade two, five thousand, eight thousand power, so she's below standard. Let's see if she uh meets the need to be eight thousand. Vanguard and regard during your turn. If you have four or more unit cards in your hand, she gains power plus two thousand. So that's not really hard to do. As soon as you drive check, you probably should. So, yeah, and it's a continuous effect, so it's the moment. Uh, so, yeah, she becomes a 10,000, which actually is pretty good. Second beta. And automatic when rode upon by a card with witch in its card name. Soul Blast 1, draw a card, which is pretty nice. It's a great to witch restricted, uh, slightly better costed, well, better in it's an, a cost that Oracle Think Tank doesn't really use that much version of. Circle Mages. That's also a good beta on Regard. It helps beat back against cards uh, from Force Clans. So she's nice. She's not amazing, but she's nice. And I'm actually kind of happy right now. I don't buy um, uh, Vanguard physically anymore because I could see having about three Oracle Think Tank decks already. I don't like money. I, I clearly hate my wallet. Or because I've got nowhere to play, fate likes my wallet. I'm not sure how this works. But PP is pretty cool. I I like her, especially for a devoted witch deck. She does something on regard worth doing, and if you get to ride her, hey, plus one, that's great. And she's in theme with the old witch cards of Soul Blasting, actually. Her and Lolo have been. So let's go with our new grade three. She's, uh, she's got art all right, uh, that's, yeah, Wisteria Witch Zozo. 
Grade 3, Protect, 12,000, so pretty bog standard. Double rare, choose your budget card. And Automatic, Vanguard, when it attacks, reveal any number of imaginary gift Protect from your hand. For each card revealed, three units from your front row gain plus 5,000 till end of turn. So if you reveal two, three of your units gain plus 5,000. An automatic regard and Vanguard when it's like hits a Vanguard. Well, when it hits, it hits. Counterblast one, draw a card. Pretty bold standard, pretty good. Uh, cost a down version of the old Maiden of Libra, which was honestly too expensive to start with. I like this. Uh, it's definitely uh, trying to take the place of the deer. Uh, that's because of how Coco works. And it base this one actually does promote you using draw triggers because you hoard the uh, protect gifts and then you go straight for this. Although, uh, there is, well, when we get to Coco, I will say there is an argument for going this, then Coco, then this again. But I like it. It's a good uh, game ender. It does decent things on Regard. It does decent things on Vanguard. It has threat. There's a lot of things to like here. Uh, it, it's uh, cool. And even if you just ride it continuously because you don't want to spend much money, I, I don't know uh, why you wouldn't want to spend much more money on the deck considering Oracle Think Tank's great. Uh, it's just a 5,000 buff each turn and plus 5 for each time you re-ride, which is pretty cool. Works pretty good. And it's not made uh, which restricted, which is also good. So you can use this with your pentagonal mage, sorry, hexagonal major starter deck. Troll deck, that's pretty good. So let's go to the well, the best Oracle Think Tank deck for the English format because of the way things were released. Scarlet Witch Coco, because English never really got on the Sukuyomi bandwagon. Not like Japan did. Coco was insanely popular and personal experience. Really good. Coco was a great deck. Uh, me and a friend of mine in Queensland both really liked that deck a lot. So, Scarlet Witch Coco, Grade 3, Protect, 12,000, she's triple rare, she's not going to be expensive. So, mm, which is being set up to be a little bit on the budget side, which is nice. They're providing, that's good. Automatic Vanguard when rode from a Grade 2, draw a card. So, when you ride from PP, draw 2 for Soul Blast 1. That's nice. Automatic costs Soul Blast 1 and Counter Blast. Sorry, Soul Blast 1, Grade 3, and Counter Blast 1. I don't know if you have ways to shove Grade 3 into the Soul, so this is definitely a later ride. So, yeah, Coco, Coco, Zozo would probably be the way you'd want to ride this. Draw two cards, discard any number of cards from your hand with which. Uh, we'll check if you can do a witch deck in a sec. And for each card you discarded, get one protect gift. And she gets one when you ride. But, uh, let's just check how many witches are here. Can you actually ride, run a full witch deck? So at the moment, you have one grade one. Hmm. No triggers. Hmm. Uh, grade two, you have, by the look of it, two, PP and Mimi. And then you have the grade threes. Uh, uh, yeah. What, how many spaces does Oracle Think Tank have in this set? Let's check, because, uh, let's just see. Uh, well. Not, 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 uh, there, there might be space. There's probably no rare space. There's a lot of common space. They, they might fill it up. It might get better as time goes on. But as a base thing, just chucking out cards you don't want for perfect cards and then going into uh, Zozo to just do it as a field buff and then uh, ride this again. Get rid of other cards you don't want because you've got perfect cards. They play with each other really nicely and promote that 
ride, 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 ride thing. Again, this is something I, I don't know if I've discussed this on this channel, but I've never really liked the thing of ride, 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 because it removes that familiarity and that bond with cards. Vanguard, in particular, as a game, tries to establish because this is what the whole my avatar thing tries to do. It tries to establish that bond between you and that card. That's why it focuses on characters so hard. But from a mechanical aspect, I like it. There's, I think there's a certain disconnect between what Vanguard's trying to do aesthetically and in terms of what it's trying to do to appeal to people and what it does mechanically. I, I do think that hurts a little bit, but I understand the design space. Uh, how to put this? If I were them, I would probably do the same. But... Uh, it, I like the witches. I like where they're going. I'd like to see where they go. And as I said, because of the way it's being done, it makes for a nice budget deck. Coco relates to witches. Zozo doesn't relate to witches, but she relates to Coco. And then you make the witch deck from there, which is really cool. Lots of things to like here. And you can easily, easily with Coco, uh, you only really need to discard two to get to protect gifts. So she gains three overall, and then when you ride Zozo, you get another one, so you have four, and then your front row gets plus 20,000. That's a pretty big buff right there. And you have these cards like Pippi, which start at 10,000, which makes life quite easy. There's things to do here, which are good. So, uh, I think Oracle Think Tank's going in a great direction. I can't wait to see where Gold Paladin and Royal Paladin go with this. Royal Paladin feels like it might be just a mod to the old deck, which I'd prefer this direction. But we'll see how things go. Uh, Nubatama and Narakami are new clans to V, so they kind of can't do what Oracle Think Tank can do. But Gold and Royal are going to be very, very interesting in the upcoming weeks, and I really look forward to it. Hoping to see uh, Bluish Flame back. That'd be nice to see. Agla Vale. Anyway, this has been some Gamer Dude, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time.